Okay, we are. We're on a bumpy road is what we're on. Uh, yeah, we're up in Illinois up here on Highway 50. Oh, maybe it smoothed out just a little bit here. Uh, it's a little bit better. Uh, anyway, we're up here on 51, uh, US 51 in Illinois. Uh, we're just north of uh, Vidalia, Illinois. Uh, we're heading up to Chicago. And uh, uh, it's not so much about the trip that today. It's more about uh, upcoming uh, rules and regulations. Uh, so you don't have to look at me anymore. I'm going to spin you around so you can look at the highway here. All right, there we go. That's what we're driving down. Right in the middle of farm country up here. <laughs> anyway, uh, today's video is about CDLs. Uh, CDL. They're changing the rules on us. Uh, they're making it harder. They're, gonna, they're going to make it harder come February, February 8th or 7th. February 7th, I think it is of 2020, um, or 2022, I'm sorry. Uh, they're gonna make it harder harder for you to get a CDL. Uh, main thing is, you won't just be able to go down to, the, down to the DMV and get your CDL. You're gonna have to go to some kind of trucking school, truck driving school, all right? And uh, let's see, how do, how do they explain this? Back, right now, as of right now, the way to go to get a CDL is you can go down to the DMV and get their little pamphlet, you know, their study guide, and study up on it about, you know, commercial trucks. You go back down there and you take a written test, okay? You take a written test and there's the, the regular questions just like on a car, uh, you know, class C driver's license. Uh, stop lights, turn lights, you know, turn signals, you know, right on red, you know, following distance, all that kind of stuff that you would normally have on any driver's license. Then you have a couple more pages, and I don't know how many questions it is, 20 or maybe 30 or 40 more questions, but it's all truck-related questions, okay? And it all revolves about, you know, how to do your, your pre-trip inspections and, and uh, you know, railroad crossings and hazmat, you know, and that's another thing. If you got, uh, if you got, uh, you can get endorsements, and that's like another page for each endorsement. So it ends up being a well, fairly lengthy, uh, I think it's a multiple choice question or test. I, I don't remember it so many, so many years ago, but I think it's a multiple choice question uh, a, a test. And uh, so you have your main test for your driving. You have a, a, a secondary test for your uh, commercial part of it, you know, the truck, drive, truck part of it. And then you have for each one of your uh, uh, endorsements, let's say uh, bus, bus endorsements, you got there's some, some questions about buses, you know, if you're going to be a bus driver. Uh, then there's questions about pulling doubles, you know, and anyway, you go on down through all these tests. There's hazmat, there's uh, all these different things, you know, and um, you get your, your driver's license, you, you, you pass the written test, then you have to go outside, you have to have a truck there, go rent a truck or borrow somebody's truck, or if you already own your own truck, take it down there, or somebody else would have to drive it down there for you because you don't have a driver's license, right? So anyway, you have a truck outside, and you go outside, and you do a walk around DOT, uh, DOT uh, pre-trip inspection, okay? And you verbally tell them how, you know, uh, I'm looking at this, because they can't tell what you're thinking. You have to verbalize it for them, okay? I'm looking at the tire tread on this tire. I'm looking for any abrasions or any, you know, uh, 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 defects or or what, low tread or whatever, okay? I'm looking at this joint to make sure it looks good. You know, I'm looking at this airline. I'm listening for this airline. I'm you know, you know, walk around and do your whole free trip inspection the way it says to do in the book. So you've studied up how to do that. You've done your written test. You've done your, your walk around free trip inspection test. Then you get in the truck, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the uh, not instructor, the, uh, 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 the officer, it's usually a, a, a highway patrol officer, gets in the passenger seat with you and you go on a predetermined uh, route and he, has, you know, he evaluates your driving skills, okay? And that's what they do now. And I don't, you know, each, each office is probably a little different because every place you go, the roads are a little bit different, but they make you go by certain landmarks and, you know, obstacles or, you know, not obstacles, but like stoplights and you know, turn right on a red, you know, that type of thing. And they're watching how you shift the truck or if it's an automatic, you know, you only get an automatic driver's license. You don't get the, the manual part of your license, okay? You have a restriction on there for automatic only. Okay, that's how you get a driver's license today. You can go down 
study a book, take a written test, take a walk around test, and take a driving test. And you get your CDL. If you pass it, you get your CDL. All right? The way, when I first got my driver's license, I had a Class C driver's license, and I worked for Coca-Cola. After I got out of the military, I went to work for Coca-Cola on route delivery. And I was allowed, with a Class C driver's license, I was allowed to drive one of their little short bobtail trucks, okay? Uh, it was one of those little Ford cab over type trucks, you know? Anyway, um, so I had one of those, and I made a route delivery, okay? Well, to get a, a better route, a higher paying route, you had to get your CDL, or back then it's called a, sh a commercial uh, chauffeur's license, or a, a Class A chauffeur's license, all right? There was no such thing as a CDL back then. So I went down and studied the book and went in and took the written test and then one of the guys at Coca-Cola brought a truck down for me. It was a, 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 a international single axle tractor and a single axle trailer. So it had a total of 10 tires. Okay, it was a 10 wheeler instead of an 18 wheeler. And it was an automatic. Okay. And but back then they didn't have the automatic uh, uh, restriction, you know, if, if you had an auto anyway. So I, I took my test with that kind of a truck. And basically, we went around the block. I'm serious. We drove around the block. Uh, it was a total of about a quarter of a mile. We pulled back up on this straight road. He says, all right, look behind. Is anybody behind you? I'm like, no. He says, back up about 50 feet. Put it in reverse, and I backed up about 50 feet. He says, there you go. Thank you. Go over here, park, and let's go in. And I got my Class A chauffeur's license, and that was it. Later, you know, a few years later, about four or five years later, it was early 90s, 91 or 92, right along in there. They came out with a CDL. So I go down to the DMV thinking I'm going to have to do all this testing stuff. And they said, oh, no, you, you, you've been driving for so many years, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're grandfathered in. Oh, well, ain't that great. So they gave him my CDL, and I've had that ever since. All right, so <clears throat> what they're changing on, April, uh, April, uh, on uh, February 7th, I think it's, it's either the 7th or the 8th. I'll put it here on the caption. But, but anyway, um, what they're changing is you can't go down and get it that way anymore. You're going to have to go to some kind of classroom, uh, class uh, schooling, okay? Uh, truck driving school, I would imagine maybe a, uh, uh, a community college would work as long as you, but you have to go, uh, you have to study in a classroom for a certain number of hours, and you also have to do a, a certain number of, uh, a certain amount of uh, driving, okay? Uh, to, uh, practice or whatever. All right, so if you're wanting your CDL, you're going to have to get down there in the uh, near future. <laughs> When's this video coming out? Probably right before Christmas. So you got about a month and a half to go down and get a, a CDL unless you need to, you know, uh, and if you don't, you're going to have to go to one of these classes. Uh, now, one of these classes, it can, it can be expensive or it can be cheap. It just depends on how you do it. Now, these truck driving schools, this what little I know of them. I used to be a trainer years ago for a, a, a company back, well, during 9-11. During 9-11, I, I was actually a trainer for a company. And uh, what their process was is you, you'd hire with them and you'd sign a little contract with them. And uh, they wants me to turn my headlights on. There we go. Oh, he's happy now. It's not that dark out yet. So anyway, what you do is you go down uh, to this a, a trucking company. You use mega carriers, these large carriers. They will hire you into a trucking school, okay? Into their their school. They will train you, and it won't cost you anything. But you have to sign a contract that says you'll work for them for a certain amount of time. Usually, it's about one, maybe even two years. You know, 12 months. 18 months, 24 months, it's all, each company's a little different, okay? If you fail to work for them for that amount of time, they will charge you for the schooling. So, actually, basically what they do is they charge you for the schooling, but you don't have to, there's no out-of-money pocket, uh, no out-of-pocket out uh, uh, expense. You do the training with them, and then they have, you have a, a debt toward them, all right? And as you work for them, it pays the debt off. And some of them just, you know, uh, pay you a certain mileage per, you know, cents per mile uh, rate, and oh good, I'm finally a smooth highway. Yes, there we go. But anyway, they will pay you a, 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 a certain rate and everything. It's much lower than a fully qualified driver because they're recouping some of the costs that they put in to, to train you, okay? Now, uh, the one I work for, they actually 
uh, I was a, I was a trainer, and the one I worked for, they uh, they actually had like a, a dorm, a, a, a room, a room set of like bunk beds, almost like almost like in, in uh, basic training in the military. Your bunk bed set up, bunk bed set up, and you had your lockers and all that, and you you'd stay on on site. Other trucks, trucking companies might have like a hotel. They they go down and buy a small hotel somewhere in town, and they or they make a deal with a hotel and they buy rooms, and you stay at the hotel for the amount of time it takes to go through the classes. Once you, after you go through the class, it might be four weeks, it might be six weeks, it might be eight weeks, it depends on the company. Then you would get in a truck with a trainer like me, and you would put in your time driving down the road as a student or, you know, a, a, a second seat, so to say. I'd be the first seat and the you know, student would be the second seat. After you put your time in, eventually you get, you know, the, 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 the trainer would sign you off and say, okay, he's, he or she's good enough to be able to uh, get their own truck now. Okay, they'll put you in your own truck and down the road you go. Other companies might have a shorter amount of time with a trainer like instead of six weeks with a trainer, they only you know you only do three weeks with a trainer, and then you do three weeks with another student. So there's two students working together, kind of helping each other out. Okay. Oh, I don't you know I don't remember that part of the class. You know, and when, how do we do this? Oh, and the other one would know, and you kind of help each other out that way. Um, other ways of getting a CDL are going to a community college and paying up front with your own money. All right, and. Once you went through that, you go to a trucking company and say, I'd like to get hired on. The problem with the community college, and, and no, it was not using the jakes in town tonight. Um, the problem with a uh, community college thing is once you've done the classroom and everything, there's a lot of trucking companies that won't hire you until you have two years of experience because of insurance reasons. Their insurance won't allow them to hire somebody until they've had two years of experience. So that's one of the problems with community college. But on the other hand, if you do have a company that will hire you and you go to the community college, you don't, you're not, uh, you're not locked into working for them for the next year or two or whatever, okay? If you go there and it doesn't work out, you can pack your bags and go somewhere else, okay? So there's just different ways of going about this trucking, uh, you know, getting into trucking this way. But the easy way, just going down and getting your own driver's license and uh, and uh, and just go find some trucking company that'll hire you or a private individual, i.e. Uh, Kirk. He did that was his, his brother-in-law, uh, John. John did not go to a truck driving school. John went down and got, uh, actually worked for Kirk for a while just as a farmhand and then hired on, uh, uh, went down and got a CDL. Kirk went and bought a truck for him and said, there you go. And he just runs locally there. So. As of February 14th, John would not be able to do that anymore, okay? He wouldn't be able to uh, go down and get a driver's license in the way that he did, okay? So I don't know. I don't understand why the government's, you know, they're, 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 everybody's screaming, saying there's a driver shortage, driver shortage. We're, we're so short on drivers. Yet, it seems like at every turn, they keep trying to make it harder and harder and harder for drivers to either get into the business or, once they're in, to, to stay in the business, uh, in, 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 a, in the uh, industry. And uh, what I mean by that is I've got a couple friends of mine that no longer drive a truck because they couldn't pass their, their DOT physical. They're a little overweight and their blood pressure was a little too high and they said, no, you, you, you don't pass your DOT physical. So, yeah, and they took their, their, uh, took their driver's license away. Well, they, they don't take the driver's license away. They just, you don't have a DOT physical, you can't drive. And you know, eventually you just say to heck with it, I, uh, I can't. I, I, I can't drive, so why have the CDL? And you just relinquish your CDL over time, uh, eventually. Um, so anyway, with that, um, uh, 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 I guess that's about it. We're in downtown pa uh, Pana, uh, or Pana, what, what's the name of this town? I, I, I don't know. The name of this town is Pana, P-A-N-A, Pana, Illinois. So, all right, well, let's see, turn you around here. <clears throat> So I guess that's all I got to tell you about right now, and uh, uh, hope you hope you learned a little something with that. And uh, we will see you next time. Okay, so take care and uh, keep the highway housing, keep the uh, keep the shiny side up and the greasy side down. Keep the bears off your get the keep the bugs off your glass and the bears off your. Boop.